All right, it's time. I think I'm ready to set up a VPN server. I've been talking about this for the longest time, and ever since I messed with OpenVPN years ago, I've just been dreading going back and doing it. But I actually just came across this new protocol called WireGuard. Now, just to elaborate, this is not an ad. WireGuard is not a service you pay for. It is a new VPN protocol that is actually baked into the Linux kernel. I think you can find it in version Linux 5.4. And there are rumors that it's going to make its way into the Android Linux kernel. Now, the thing about WireGuard is that it is faster than OpenVPN. So looking at real world speed tests, you can see that it is actually much faster than OpenVPN. In addition, it's designed for mobility and mine. So they claim that it's more efficient for mobile devices like Android and iOS. And is using new state of the art cryptographic algorithms. Um, so they claim that it is more secure um, and everyone's talking about this smaller code base, even though small code base doesn't necessarily mean something's more secure, but that's kind of what they're saying. Um, and so far, there's really no vulnerabilities in this that have been shown. And the coolest thing about this and the reason I'm interested is that it's very easy to actually get up and running. So let's go and set this up on the Raspberry Pi 4. All right, so let's first do a sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. I am using a Raspberry Pi 4, which is running Raspbian version 10. So I'm excited to use this WireGuard VPN. Um, the, my main reason for wanting to use a VPN is I run Pi-hole on my Raspberry Pi. Um, if you don't know, Pi-hole is just a way to block all ads on your network. Um, now, my problem is that when I go out, I'm using mobile data or I'm on a friend's network or my parents' network somewhere else. And I don't have Pi-hole running, so I can't block all the ads, which kind of annoy me. So I'm looking forward to using WireGuard so that I can VPN to my home network where I do have Pi-hole running. Um, you know, do ad blocking. All right, so that took longer than expected. <laughs> Apparently, I haven't updated my Pi in a while. All right, so like I said, WireGuard is very easy to install, but I'm super lazy, so I want an even easier way to install it. So there is this cool um, VPN script called Pi VPN, and you know, it's pretty much the simplest way to manage a VPN designed for Raspberry Pi. Um, pretty much this is going to make it even easier to install the WireGuard uh, VPN. Now, like I said, WireGuard is baked into Linux kernel. Um, I don't know if it's made as the, um, some of the dependencies has made its way into Raspbian. So there might be more dependencies to install, but this script takes care uh, of it already. So all we got to do is curl a command into bash. I know kind of dangerous. You maybe you shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it. And it's going to go and it's going to install the script and we're going to walk through the WireGuard setup. Okay, so let's go. Okay. So first it's telling us that we need to, um, it needs a static IP address to function. Um, so uh, basically on my router, I already have a DHCP reservation for my Raspberry Pi. Um, so I'm going to hit yes to this. If you don't have a DHCP reservation, hit no. Or if you don't know what that is, hit no. Um, but it is already reserved, so I'm just gonna hit yes. Here's a user, it's gonna be Dave. Uh, now, here's the important part. It's gonna ask us what protocol we wanna use. So we wanna use WireGuard, so just hit enter. And now it's gonna go and install the package. So this is the default WireGuard port. So we don't need to change this. Now remember, you do need to go into your router settings and port forward this port to your Raspberry Pi or the device that you're running WireGuard VPN on. So just keep that in mind. You do need to port for that within your router and it, normally that's a very easy process. So hit enter, yes. Um, now this is a cool thing. It's already detected that I'm running Pi-hole on this Pi. So it's going to ask me, do I want to use it as a DNS server for the VPN? And I want to say, yes, I do. So I think that's a little cool thing. Uh, Save me some setup. Okay, so now it's asking, how do I want to connect? So you can use a DNS entry or you can use a public IP address. 
Um, I don't have a DNS set up, but there are services, I think like duck DNS or something that you could use for your services. Um, that will then forge your public IP address for right now. I'm just going to use my public IP address. So I'll say, okay. And now it'll generate the server keys. Okay. So now this is saying, um, so we have one port open It's recommended that we enable unintended upgrades. This feature will check for daily for security update packages only. That sounds good to me. So I'm just going to say yes. Now remember, once you set this up, you're going to have a device that's going to be exposed to the outside internet. So you do want to make sure that your passwords are secured, you know, um, and that you follow any necessary security precautions. If you're using SSH, make sure you're only using SSH through uh, uh, public and private keys and not through a standard password, you know, all the basic stuff like that. Okay, and great. Now we are ready. So it's going to ask us if we want to reboot and yes, we'll reboot right now. Okay. So now that we're back up, we're going to create a profile. So our client, in this case, my phone can connect to the VPN. So we're going to do sudo pi VPN add enter name for the client. I'm going to call it galaxy S 10. Well, I can't spell right. Galaxy S 10. And perfect. It just created um, the profile. Now, here's what I love about this. They make it very easy in order to transfer this prof profile because what we can do is we can just create a QR code. So pi VPN dash QR and we're going to do Galaxy S10. And now we have a QR code. So finally, you can download the WireGuard app on the Play Store or the App Store or wherever you're using this and you can scan that QR code from within the app. Once you scan it, it'll create the profile and then you'll have a VPN tunnel ready to use. All right. So finally, once we added that profile on a mobile app, all we need to do is type in pi VPN clients to see a list of clients to confirm that it is working. You should see some bytes received and some bytes sent. And that's pretty much it. So guys, like I said, this is a really easy way to set up a VPN. Highly encourage you to do it. It took me all of honestly five minutes to do this. Um, it's very straightforward and it's a quick way to have um, increased security and you know, a little bit more privacy while browsing on the web. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, go hit that thumbs up button. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you want to see more content I upload, go and hit that subscribe button. And as always, Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.